proceed to open the backpack. One of the first things you find inside, some some kind of a diary that also actually has something, some contraption fixed onto it that seems like a small typewriter, almost like a calculator. You think this might be what could create those documents and pins. Yeah. Then you have a black light. You have a bag similar to the bag that you guys found downstairs. Weird looking small miniature flashbang, two of them in fact. Shots for a different type of weapon. There is a clay nova water filter, and there is a clay nova mask. Can Artemis get his grubby little hands on the flashbangs? You got yourself the flashbangs. Examine it closely. <laughs> Hidden weapon knowledge would tell you these were made compact because they would be affixed onto something small and they would be shot from somewhere unexpected and hidden. Do the flashbangs look like they would fit in the uh, big gun that I have? You think it has signs of it fitting into an item of clothing. Ah. Are you grabbing anything or inspecting anything, No. Yeah, I'm gonna take a look at the shots. <laughs> this type of ammunition, whatever it would be used for ammo-wise, could be one heck of a dangerous drug if you carefully grind it up into the fine dust that it can become. If used in small dosages, it's a very strong upper. If consumed more than a certain amount, could be poisonous. All right, well, I'm gonna pocket one, and then I'm gonna pick up the other two and ask Artemis if he knows what these are. <laughs> and if he tells me what they are, he can have these two. The only Ooh. ones we have, I promise. He would tell you. He would tell you everything that he knows anyway. You know now that this would be dangerous if you were to try to grind them up without good tools. Otherwise, it's very valuable in a gun. It could do lots of damage. It's a very versatile type of ammo. You guys need to find the gun in order to find out how exactly it is flexible. Well, then I'm going to go ahead and give Artemis the, the two shots. Cheers, lad. I'm just going to put the rest of the stuff back into the bag and put the bag on. Do you guys want to join in with the other people before we go to their turn or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If we were to cut the skin away, would that be even more useful to when the, we start using the elevator? Technically, it could be. Huh? Yeah. And by the way, Noel, Artemis, Reckless Cinder, as you guys come down, you see that David is no longer there. Artemis is just like, oh, bollocks. He'll go back upstairs. <laughs> so Chico waits for him to get upstairs. Then she says, we moved it. Artemis comes down. Do you guys want me to go up and cut the skin off real quick? Don't you want to wait for another opportunity? Because if the father might feel the skin any moment now. We need to use what we have already spent. Do we really need the elevator at this particular moment in history? The thing is, we have a limited supply of drugs. We use the drugs kit to get the backpack. We need to use all the available time that we have. You are assuming we won't find any new drugs later. Your name is Reckless Cinder, not Needlessly Suicidal Cinder. We could fashion something onto the long pole that we have and just cut it from the bottom. Yeah, that's a good idea. I wish I'd thought of that. He goes starting to fashion something. Excuse me, aren't you going to give a single fuck about the fascinating armor that we can make here? Oh, armor? Where'd you get that idea? I'm going to go do my own shit. And Sachiko leaves to the boiler. The cinder with Sachiko will follow. He also, he feels like he somehow offended Sachiko, so we'll want to make her a makeshift sex toy as a feel-better gift. You can be working on that as well. You can tell me the specifications when their turn is done. <gasps> Sachiko and Cinder. I want to study the corpse. A scavenger killed long, long time ago fed on by something that would match the criteria of that electrically charged creature. Burnt notes on it as well, the same type of paper that Amelia uses to write notes on. You think that one side of the corpse was once trapped after it was fed on already a little bit. Been set off as well, there was an explosion, traces of another being's blood on it, they match with Logan's DNA. There is ruined armor suggesting that this person 
had been living for a while in the apocalypse, it seems handmade, and you think that part of why this body had been preserved for so long was the poop oil impact. Based on the pattern of how Logan had been eating this corpse, do I get the impression that Logan is completely animalistic or is he intelligent? Not as much as you would expect from the rest of the family. It probably developed its own more simple nervous system. Do I think Logan killed this man or did he just find the corpse and fed on it? You think there are signs of blunt trauma fitting Amelia's weapon. The scavenger was made immobile, was kept alive for a long time, and then died by Logan's probably electrocution. And do I learn anything about how to base Logan from these scars? You again find some sort of liquid, saliva type of mucousy liquid. Easily felt when you're touching it, but it's barely visible to the naked eye. Like the spit in the fridge. Yeah. Do I get the impression that maybe I can recommend to Noel to use the poop juice somehow in our advantage, like protect us from something? Or is that beyond my knowledge? Your knowledge would tell you that there is a connection between the poop oil and certain mutations that would allow a corpse to connect to certain fabrics of the house and be preserved, perhaps even when it's alive. It could be preserved as a part of the house. If you guys want to capture people in the future and preserve them in the house, you know you can if you keep the anus. That's nasty, but... Dope. Oh yeah, slaves. <laughs> Amelia already keeps lovers, so... We'll be enslaving all of your viewers. As the biologist, I named this poop juice the poop juice of eternity. <laughs> 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 I guess that's it. Cinder will go up and snuggle and say, I know you're thinking of the group and I appreciate you. You're a little mistaken. I'm thinking only of myself and you, the rest of them matter as far as they can help us survive. Artemis and Noel and another cinder. I want to make a dildo which will like vibrate and have two moving parts. They both like slide over each other and they like, but they like move in like opposite directions. Can I chip in my knowledge to line it with pain coke to force them into a constantly growing rhythm? Ooh, that'd be cool. And I also want to make it very ridgy. Does the size matter? Can I make it adjustable? Adjustable dildo that vibrates with two moving parts that go separate ways yes. and then augmented yes. by null using yes. drugs. Yes. So let me... Uh, Cinder will help in any way she can <laughs> I will, to make this I will, possible. Yeah, I will be the test subject, considering uh, that I have the most flexible and old vagina out of the group. <laughs> Yeah, he'll prototype wow. one for Noel. He'll prototype <laughs> one for Noel. You would need to use at least 20 parts, and with the help of everyone, you would be able to make an adjustable dildo that shouldn't be on when it's being adjusted, shouldn't be inside when it's being adjusted, shouldn't have force on it when it's being adjusted. Yeah. But otherwise can work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. And for Noel, you could use one pain colk, mix it with one preservative, and you could glaze it in that way. The very first time they use it, maybe a second time as well, when they start a rhythm of stimulus, it would actually become much more orgasmic in that same rhythm. They might feel obsessed to keep going as well. It might have slightly destructive effects, but not too much. Is Sachiko going to use it for her own pleasure or is she going to use it as a torture device? That's what I can't wait to find out. Why not both? <laughs> She can even threaten people. You know how they say, I drink from the skulls of my enemies? It's like, I masturbate with, with what the I dildos torture of my, my enemies. enemies with. Yeah. Oh my god, this is really an idea that I had. You know these companies that use real dicks to make dildos? I thought it would be cool if you chop off and send the dicks of your enemies to turn them into dildos. <laughs> Once you send more than one chopped off dick, it becomes concerning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you said that was 20 of the parts. Is that basic weapon tech or structural? That's just basic parts. And Sachiko seems to be done with the corpse above. Can we like wrap it up and have like a bow on it and make a little card? 
I will be the robber. Put it in me and I'll uh, take it to her. <laughs> Cinder will write in calligraphy on the notepad. We're sorry we didn't appreciate your great idea, so we got something for you to show our appreciation. <laughs> fuck yourself. <laughs> fuck oh, fuck. Uh, Artemis will add a token for one free head pat. All right, and that's it. You come down, Sachiko, to all of them holding this wrapped up and note carrying. <laughs> Phallic shaped object. So, what are you holding, Artemis? A dildo? Pass it to her! Pass it to her! No, we're gonna, gonna let Noel. Oh, no, fuck, fuck Artemis. Uh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> They're just throwing it at each other. <laughs> like, no, 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 there you go. The Chico says, is that a bomb? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bomb, man. Here. Can Artemis quickly write out an instruction manual for using it, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> just put that in her hand. When Chico opens the box, you can see tears in her eyes. <laughs> the Lion King theme music is played in the background, and she holds the dildo off as if she's showing it to the entire jungle. <laughs> she says, this is the best gift I have ever received. I name you Nadia. <laughs> So that's one great excerpt of the show to just put out on the internet out of context. <laughs> but then she uh, bows down to Cinder, Artemis, and Noel one by one and says, Domo arigato gozaimasu to each of them. Uh, I'll get to work on the armor now that I've pegged what, <laughs> what it is that we weren't appreciating her for. What do we want to do? Well... A couple cinders in body armor sounds pretty nice to me. He does not get a boner. <laughs> Two cinders wrapped in the skin of a mutated infant. <laughs> uh, Noel, do you have anything that would up my concentration? I am only in possession of one dose of Excel, which has been mixed and never been tested on a human before. Artemis is very tempted. I cannot guarantee your own safety. The Chico's body language shows that she's very curious to try that drug, by the way. Uh, maybe we take it after we build the armor? When she says this, I kind of scrunch my nose a little bit. Clearly, I want to see people do it right now. <laughs> I will do it right now. I can't help with the shield building anyway. This drug improves all of your senses. This is a perfect time to take the drug and test the dildo. While I watch and take notes. <laughs> <laughs> He's using his uh, charisma. <laughs> I, I think we should get what we need to out of the way. During this debate, I just give it to Sachiko. She doesn't have to take it now, but she now is capable of doing so. <laughs> all right, so are you guys gonna proceed with the armor while Sachiko is given this drug? Yes. Yeah. That was good. You guys managed to make two sets of armor. Thunderbolt. Uh, Sachiko recommends that we should keep it on a need-based rotation, like it shouldn't belong to any two people, but it should be the group's armors and anyone who's in the harm's way should wear them. I agree. I think Reckless Cinder as a start would be a good contender, though. For now, none of us are doing anything dangerous. So I turn to Noel and say, do you dislike watching someone's vagina? What? If you want to see the effects of the drug, you are going to see my vagina too. Are you okay with that? I'm asking you for your consent because since I was raped as a child, this is the only moral bar barometer that I have. <laughs> Am I able to use a combination of both my high eyesight and focus to draw Sachiko so as she does this. Artemis has lots of dexterity, so he could help draw. Fucking Pictionary. <laughs> okay, so Noel, what are you going to do? Are you going to follow me into Daddy and Mommy's room? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
at Cinder Center runs in there and starts whispering like she did to get the low lights and the music playing. It works perfectly and you guys notice how the bed curtains themselves could turn the bed uh, into basically like a full surround 360 cinema and it could simulate different types of environments. So now we have Noel, Sachiko and one cinder. I and Artemis draws. Oh, you're going in there as well. He's drawing. <laughs> All right, so everyone is in. It's purely professional. Oh, yeah. I feel like in this session, the friendship between the characters got on a new level. Yeah. <laughs> Does one cinder stay out with Alice or is everyone going in? Yeah, no, Alice doesn't need to see this. But the leaf dog can just follow me. All right. Artemis will just like have a chair pulled up to watch. Oh god, before she does this, I, I, I rapidly run to where the video cameras are. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yes! Yeah, I, I mean, that's actually legit. You could study it from every angle then. The camera is now installed. So Chico, you're on the bed. Proceed with whatever you want to do. If there is erotic music playing, I will ask anyone who knows how to turn it off to turn it off. Extremely heavy stuff. That would be the music that Sachiko would masturbate. So this is what Sachiko will do. She will start masturbating with Nadia. You feel like very quickly you start picking up a pattern, a fraction of an orgasm every time you go with the beat of the music or every time you even allow this pattern to follow. It gets stronger the more you give in to the rhythm. She continues with the rhythm. You feel it gets stronger and stronger. Even midway in, you can't even tell the difference between orgasm and the normal pleasure buildup. For you, Noel, you now know another effect of the pain cloak and the preservative. It could prevent someone from actually knowing how tired they're getting or how much strain they're putting on themselves. Would Sashiko normally be very harsh in masturbation and how she handles her genitals? No. To her, it feels like I can just take so much more and perhaps need so much more to feel stimulus and you feel no pain whatsoever. But to all of you, it feels like she's masturbating angrily. Does this look like it's going to damage her? She will be painful when she's done if she continues and she will be very tired. She will take the entire drug. You take the drug for now, no effect. You feel more and more drawn to continue, but it seems like it's escalating, giving you that illusion of a constantly rising pitch. It feels much more intense than you could ever imagine. It starts feeling like it could be too much. The Chico would be more scared. Your muscles are moving on their own. Noel, you know with your trip sitting, the pattern itself and outside stimuli should change to help her stop or slow down. But with her own will, she can't. She will just lower her own morale. Could it also do the opposite? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could speed it up, make it more intense as well. If we're going to get her to calm down, we're all going to have to clap as fast as we can. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way. That doesn't sound logical. I mean, he, he is the trip sitter. I mean, he is. Uh... Clap, god damn it. <laughs> if this hurts her. Um, Artemis would wait until after other people have started. Oh no, I have no intention of clapping. I want Cinder to clap. If Cinder notices she's the only one clapping, she flips everybody off. Sachiko feels that. Sin is doing this uh, on purpose. She doesn't really fault Sin for this. She feels like this is uh, her own fault for uh, manipulating Sin into this position. And what she tries to do, and this is why she was doing this experiment in the first place, she wants to imagine that she is the first generation Sachiko, not herself. And she thinks the drugs will simulate her brain. And she is having sex with Avalon at the moment. So she at least tries to guide her own uh, imagination toward that scenario. Noel, now you know the other drug is slowly starting to take effect. Sachiko, you feel like you are, after regaining this glorious 
feeling of being you yourself. You want to regain that security in knowing you are doing the right thing, the strong thing. You have your strength back. But in order to achieve that, you feel like you have to watch your movements, act a certain way. You think you are acting based on evidence you've found, and you can't wait to find more evidence. You feel like you're trying to be someone you think you should have been. Even in the way you have sex, you seem to constantly be having doubts, but with a logical mindset, putting back in your head what you think you should look like, you should act like, you should be like. You don't know, Sachiko, that this is the, the effects of the other drug. But now you see yourself in third person. You're standing beside Cinder and everyone while you see yourself masturbating on the bed. Everything feels calm. Sachiko would start screaming and maybe she doesn't know that she's screaming this but she would start screaming i'm real over and over again that again does start giving you glimpses of being with avalon you see avalon's worried look towards you as if he's trying to find out what he can do to make you feel better as if he feels lost this feels like a glimpse of reality. You almost feel like you're in another place when you're seeing these glimpses. But when you are getting those glimpses, you're not there looking at yourself from third person. Sachiko on the bed moves her hand to grab the face of Avalon. Of course, the others only see her grab something invisible. And she screams, believe in me. You must believe in me. I'm going to stop clapping. <laughs> Things become a little less intense. The pattern continues, but it's a bit slower. She will approach the masturbating Sachiko and she will try to touch her. It feels like an estimate of what a skin would feel like. Uh, climbs onto the bed and tries to ensure the other Sachiko that she is real, that the fact that she had those glimpses mean that she is real, but the other Sichiko, if she doesn't feel that, she gets more and more convinced that she needs to convince everyone of her own reality. The Sachiko on the bed does not feel anything that the second Sachiko is doing. No, Sachiko on the bed might soon faint. Yeah, I'm gonna tell everyone that she's at a breaking point now, basically. And that it's probably best that we, uh, we get the device off her. Cinder will go up and pull it out. The second Sachiko now suddenly feels like the world around her grows, as if the shelter she was in was lower definition. Now there's much more of that shelter than she previously knew. The other Sachiko tries to touch Cinder. Feels like an estimate of what skin would feel like. Cinder doesn't feel anything, and you know that she doesn't feel anything. Just gaze back and observe things. Sachiko on the bed looks up, sees Cinder, and she holds out her hand, and she mouths the words without vocalizing them, touch me. Cinder will kind of crawl up on the bed and give her hand to Sachiko. As you're standing back as the second Sachiko, you think you hear bony sounding footsteps. You would actually see outside of this room a glimpse of this mutated black squishy corpse that's very small and looking slightly like Logan. Go up against the vent, jump off, and then go up the vent. But then your vision of the vent gets blurred out and then disappears as if, again, the shelter becomes smaller as Cinder touches the original Sachiko. <laughs> Noel, you think she's dissociating from her body to some degree and stimuli would bring her back to her body. So Sachiko, not on the bed, will try to focus and do every mind trick to see Logan again. The truck wears off, you're again one. How does my drawing look? Were you distracted by all the things that happened or disturbed by anything no. that happened? purely caring about the drawing. Then it's pretty damn good. Ooh. 